Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Elisa and I will be guiding you through how I created this loose watercolor floral. So I just started dropping water droplets with this fan brush. And I also picked up a spray bottle, started squirting, and then I started just to drop some watercolor pigment. So I really like doing this. It's a lot of fun. You kind of don't know what you're going to end up with. And I just kind of just kept dropping these different colors in. I believe this one is Daniel Smith. Uh, genuine amethyst and or amethyst genuine I'll link it in the description actually I don't think I was using that I think that I filmed this a few months back um, I think I was using a different palette I'm going to have to get you the name of that palette. I will link it in the description box. But it was, it's a really nice palette. It comes with all these sort of uh, muted colors. Uh, but they're beautiful. Um, there's greens and there's like a rose color and there's a purple color and a blue color. And uh, it's so, I, I think I had just gotten it when I had um, did this video. So... I wanted to give it a go and see what would happen. And uh, it really worked out nicely. It's just a nice color palette. Not my norm since I'm usually very bright and bold with my colors. Now forgive me if I remain quiet at times. Um, I will interject when I feel appropriate or I want you to know something. <laughs> I'm using a fine tip brush here. Now this is not even a special watercolor brush. This is just a plain old fine tip brush. I'm not even exactly sure of the name. Uh, I don't spend a whole lot of money on my brushes. Um, just my quills I will spend money on uh, with watercolor but I do a lot of acrylic painting as well and I just ruin my brushes because I'm always scraping and pushing and moving paint around uh, but I keep my watercolor brushes separate because I want them to retain those uh, fine tips So here I'm just using one of these um, puffers. Um, I had this is one that you used to blow uh, air onto your computer. Um, I got it on Amazon. It was relatively uh, inexpensive. I'll link one in the description box. Uh, I you probably could you even use a uh, a baby puff puff those little instrument that they use to uh, clean the baby's nose at, out <laughs> but since my baby is 20 um, I don't have one of those anymore so I bought this and you might not want to use the one you use for your baby anyway but I think it would be easily obtainable in a drugstore if you were to uh, try using one of those so I just keep pushing the air around with this puff and then intermittently going back and dropping color in. Um, when I was doing this, I kind of I didn't really have any idea what I was doing. I was kind of just playing around and as I was playing around, it started to morph into this painting. Uh, It started to remind me of, of, of flowers, kind of like dewy flowers in the morning, maybe just after a rain and the sun is coming up and you can kind of see um, webbing from 
insects or spiders kind of glistening in the sunlight and it just started to come together this way I believe I dropped um, a different color blue up there I think it's an ultramarine, ultramarine blue so as I'm using the water and using that puff to kind of blow the water around um, I'll go back in and drop more pigment and then it starts to spread around and as I do that the lighter areas start to deepen and give the piece more contrast and brightness and color came in with some paper towel I had too much water and I just lightened that up so when I do that although it lifts a lot of the color up it's creating a base for the rest of the painting as you'll start layering and layering more watercolor on top and that's what creates that perception of depth in the painting One thing about using this uh, puff is that you never know really what you're going to end up with because you can't really control it. Um, so everybody's painting will be different. for that the blurriness coming in and out as I'm raising my hand up and it's getting too close to the camera so it's getting out of focus a little bit here and there I try to be conscious of it kind of hard <laughs> trying to put enough space between my hand and the camera and the actual uh, working surface. It's a little bit hard. I feel like I'm going to get like carpal tunnel from trying to press it so hard to get enough air, force enough air out of it. I'm sure there are better ones. This is just what I have, so I was using it. Did the job. And total in total time, I mean, I did edit the video, but I think in total it was it only took me about 35 minutes and I edited it down to about 12 or 13 minutes. Taking out the, you know, drying time in between because you do want to you can continuously work on this. So when you put down the watercolor in certain areas, you don't want to go back in right away and drop more right on top because then it'll sort of fade out and blend in with the rest. Um, but the good thing was with this is that I could kind of move into a different corner and wait for it to dry a little bit. Um, because I wasn't using a tremendous amount of water, I could do that. You kind of get to know after a while when you're doing watercolors about when, what the timing is of when you can drop more color in. It doesn't have to be completely dry, it, but it does have to be dry enough that it won't blend in with the rest and kind of fade out, bleed out. And as you paint, you get to kind of 
understand that. And then sometimes you just gotta have to stop and walk away for a few minutes and let it dry. So I'm using a five by seven watercolor paper. Um, I will link it, I forgot the name. It was a cute little pad, it's really inexpensive and it's a not so bad watercolor paper. Uh, and it's on a block and using the watercolor block versus just loose paper, um, it kind of, what it does is, is that it's got adhesive on all four sides and there's a little opening in one area, sometimes in the corner, sometimes in the middle and you just take a once your painting is dry you just take a palette knife and you kind of run it along the sides and uh, you can take the paper off the benefit of using the watercolor block is that you your watercolor paper um, a lot of times it will buckle and bend and if you use the block it won't do that because you're leaving it on the block and letting it dry and then removing it once it's completely dry uh, the the con to that is you can only do one painting at a time. Coming in with some gold, um, I did drop gold in other areas. Um, gold gives it a nice, uh, looks like it gave it it's a, a center to the flower. I believe it's gold. It's either gold or yellow. Like a, um, a yellow azo. From here it looks gold. Like I said, I filmed this a while ago. I can't remember all the colors. I'll do my best <laughs> to put everything in the description box. Now I'm just flicking some watercolor specks in there, which is nice. I like to do that uh, towards the end of the painting. Uh, it just gives it a nice watercolor look. using the puff like this it, it, it allowed me to uh, keep a lot of white space in the painting a lot of the florals you don't want to cover the whole painting with watercolor you want that white space to create that contrast to help create that contrast I'm dropping in bleed, Dr. Page Martin Bleed Proof White in there. 
uh, that also gave it some white space, which is nice. I learned that trick from another YouTuber, Deborah Lynn. I'll link her channel. And there you have it. It was quick, easy, fun. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I enjoy doing this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. It lets you know when I have another video up. Uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. Uh, it lets YouTube know that you like the video and it helps serve it up to others so that they can find it. Uh, thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon.